Called order, City Commission meeting of Tuesday, May 7th, 2019. Let the record show that we are missing one commissioner, Mr. Frederick. First item up is the order of business. Mr. Gaw, any changes to the order of business? Uh, yes, President Decker, there is one amendment, one uh, addition to the agenda. Under administration and finance, we will add, add a letter F for approval of amendment to the 2019 Airport Capital Improvement Plan funding. Okay. Any other items? No, sir. That is it. All right. Any questions for Mr. Gaw on the addition to the administrative um, items? Now I look for a motion on the order of business. Move to approve. I have a motion to approve the uh, order of business as amended. Second. With a second. Any further discussion or questions on the order of business? Hearing none, all in favor of the order of business as amended, state aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Commissioners, are there any items on the consent agenda that you wish to discuss? There are no items on the consent agenda you wish to discuss. Um, I'd look for a motion on the consent agenda. Move to approve. I have a motion to approve. Second. <clears throat> With a second. Any further discussion, questions on the consent agenda? Hearing none, we'll vote. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Ms. Trustum? Aye. Ms. Walla? Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries on the consent agenda. We have a couple of timetable items this evening. It's starting at 5 o'clock. We'll move right into administration. Uh, first item up is the Gallagher Actuarial Consulting Agreement, and that'll be handled by Deputy City Administrator Carlson. Thank you, President Decker and Commissioners. Uh, before you is a contract with Gallagher. This, the Retirement Board asked for our actual actuarial firm Gallagher to provide a revised contract limiting the term to one year instead of three years um, so that the city can go out and issue an RFP. Uh, the city has been with the Gallagher firm for t 10 years and feel that it's time to look at doing an RFP to check on the competitiveness of pricing. Administration received the contract from the vendor in February of 19 so the city is currently working without a contract and any transition um, we would try to do right now would take too much time so we're looking at uh, where legal recommends at least agreeing to use the current vendor for 2019 and then go out for an RFP. The retirement board and administrative staff is recommending approval of the one-year contract for the actuarial services from Gallagher for 2019. Okay thank you Mrs. Carlson. Any questions for Mrs. Carlson on this contract? Uh, Mrs. Carlson so the Total could be about 23, 20, 25, 5. Is that correct? 25,500? Commissioner um, Steiner, just one moment here and I'll just pull that up. I didn't have that. Um. I, I see pension plans 14,000, GA, yep. SB 2500, OPB plan uh, for the GA, SB valuation 9,000. Yep. You are absolutely correct. Okay, in and the that's about um, that is about two thousand more than what we did last year, and so um, they haven't changed prices for three years because we do about a three-year contract at all times. So, in in the past, in. They, they mentioned uh, services not listed in section three, running from two hundred forty to three hundred fifty dollars per hour. Have they ever used any of that? Yes, we do use that. How many, um, how many hours do they? If they have to do an actuarial for a retiree that's coming in, in our defined benefit plan, this is the old city plan, mm -hmm. and if they, if uh, employees retiring and they want to know what they're going to end up with for their benefit, the plan pays for that. But if um, the city or an employee wants to know something over and above their one time, then they are charged from 240 to 300 comparing to what the actuaries, but the employee pays that. Okay, do you have any idea how much the city has paid in the past for the hourly rate? I mean, total? 
on, on a total, no, I would not know that. I could I could get that because it comes right out of why, our past plan. Why don't you get to the next meeting and uh, okay. you know, we can still work on this meeting, but. Okay. And if it's been consistent prior years, too, would be. It has been for the last three years that I know of since I've been here. It's been this amount, 240 okay. to around 300. Yeah. It just But how much have we paid is what I'm saying. Did right. the bill is 10 hours, 20 hours, 30 hours? And I will get that. I Thank will you. get that yep, that's for the last three years since we had the contract. Okay, any other questions for Mrs. Carlson? I know the uh, retirement board was pretty adamant about doing the RFP, so mm -hmm. I think this will cover us for the rest of the year and then we'll get some uh, proposals to the retirement board and they'll make a selection uh, hopefully by the end of this year for next year. Correct. So. Mr. President, I would then move that we approve. Okay, we have a motion to approve this agreement with Gallagher. Second. Any further discussion, questions for Mrs. Carlson? Hearing none, we'll vote. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Ms. Walla? Aye. Mrs. Trustum? Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries. Next item up is Chapter 39 Amendment relating to permits and inspection of mobile home units. Uh, City Administrator Gaw, you'll be handling this. Yes, thank you, President Decker and Commissioners. This is an amendment to Chapter 39 relating to permitting and inspection of mobile home units. Uh, at the last meeting, uh, April 16th, the first reading was held in the public hearing. At that time, you were advised that this was recommended by the uh, Department of Commerce um, so that uh, our staff could inspect and permit mobile homes rather than the state staff. This uh, aligns with the previous mobile home ordinance that was established this is kind of the second part of that so this is the the second reading I um, mean can be approved final passage and the staff recommends doing so all right thank you mr. Gaw uh, any questions for mr. Gaw on ordinance number 1674 and this is a chapter 39 amendment relating to mobile home units and this was a state recommendation so any questions or comments and we did have the public hearing at the last meeting so if there are no more questions or comments, I'd look for a motion on this Chapter 39 amendment. Mr. President, I would move to approve the second reading and final passage of ordinance, ordinance number 1674. I have a motion to approve and pass the, the uh, Chapter 39 amendment. Second. Any further discussion or questions? Hearing none, we'll vote. Mrs. Trustum? Aye. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Ms. Walla? Aye. There votes aye. Motion carries. Uh, we have an amendment to our retirement plan. Mr. Gaw? Yes, President Decker. This is uh, something that came from the retirement board. Uh, they have seen this and recommended bringing it forward. This is in the defined contribution plan, the, the city's defined contribution plan. It would set forth some, uh, some parameters to allow for in-service distributions, uh, for contributions, as well as hardship distributions. Um, these are both things that have come up uh, from some actual requests. And uh, again, reviewing those uh, with the Retirement Board, they recommend approval. Okay, any questions for Mr. Gaw on this amendment to our retirement plan? This effectively takes, uh, I mean, this will be effective June 1st then, if, upon if we do pass it. Yes. Oh, correct. Okay. Move to approve, Mr. President. We have a motion to approve. Second. second. With a second. Any further discussion, questions for Mr. Gaw on the retirement plan amendment? Hearing none, we'll vote. Mrs. Trustum? Aye. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Ms. Walla? Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries on the retirement plan amendment. Mr. Gow, we have a Freedom Energy oil lease uh, extension. I understand that uh, there's, there has been maybe a change. 
Yes, this has been uh, somewhat of a moving target. It, it came up at the April 16th commission meeting as kind of a surprise to us uh, from the, the Freedom Energy folks. Um, so we, we put it on a special meeting on the 24th. Um, there were a few other questions. We went out to get some clarifications. Uh, that started several discussions on does it really, is it necessary, is an extension necessary or not? Um, we went ahead and put it on the, the agenda and shortly thereafter the Freedom Energy called and said they, they're taking it off the table. They do not believe a, an extension is ready. They have started work on the site. Um, it's debatable whether or not we, we think it's quite uh, where it should be, but, but it is work started. So uh, we, we tend to agree since they've pulled it off the table, we really don't have anything to approve. But since it had been tabled, we wanted to bring it back to you and kind of give you that update. But at this time, we're not uh, bringing the amendment uh, recommending that to you since it was pulled off the table. I know the dirt, dirt work has been done, but I haven't seen a rake out there. So I guess we'll check on it this week to see. Um, any other questions for Mr. Gaw? Uh, this has essentially just been pulled, so we're not going to be approving anything on this is more or less a report so. there are no questions we'll move on um, item E we have the 2019 DDA funding request and mr. Gall, you're gonna start this yes um, this is something I, I just wanted to give a little bit of an update uh, this is something since my arrival I was hoping we could perhaps start looking in the budgeting process for somewhat of a regular appropriation for the downtown association uh, looking at the 2020 budgeting process we talked about that with the subsidy committee uh, a couple of weeks ago that discussion went well and we will be bringing that to you uh, as, as we move forward into the discussion for 2020 so tonight what mrs. Swartz is going to talk to you about give you a little quick update here um, and then also talk about some needs for for 2019 funding Amy. Good evening, President Decker, City Commissioners, City Staff. Thank you so much for your time this evening. Um, before I get to my proposal, I wanted to just kind of update you all on what we've done over the last year and a few months, and so that you could kind of get a perspective on, since the last time we were before the commission, what we what's been going on downtown. We have a vision statement business, government, and community working together to enhance the vitality of the downtown for the benefit of the Dickinson community. Our mission statement is very similar. The mission of the Downtown Association is to create a vibrant downtown through effective development, communication, promotion, and education. We are now 85 members strong. Our membership has grown over the last year and a half from 35 members to now 85. We will be offering a new tiered membership this July with the renewals that will also allow some flexibility in our member comp contribution. We support our members with monthly meetings, marketing and promotion. Just a few photos of some of our members. Our downtown association has 12 board members. The ones listed here, plus two brand new board members I'll tell you about, um, myself, Val Decker, S.D. Milburn, Tori Barnum, Brian Nelson, Shay Thomas, Terry Dvorak, Jared Tugood, Jessica Cote, Tracy Tews, and our two newest board members, Josh Jacobson of Red Rock Ford and Dustin Dossinger of the City Police Department. So in preparation for our capital campaign, we also this last year created a partner association, a 501c3. As part of that, we, we created a board of directors for that organization. 
We have held monthly planning meetings and started our capital campaign planning as well. Our board members for our 501c3 organization are listed here. Myself, Patrick Healy, Kelly Gillen, Thomas Mitzel, Mike LaFour, Haley Kripe, and Carla Porter. We have many partnerships. We have assisted Craig with the engineering department last year in a grant that was needed for the Villard Street Lighting Project. We have provided input for the Renaissance Zone with Steve Josephson. Our events group helps uh, keep our shopping activities going all year long. The CVB has been a great partner with us and with the downtown, providing marketing grant, mar a marketing grant as well as educational support webinars for our members. The State Main Street Initiative Partnership provides education and grant opportunities for our downtown and our city. Talk about some of the events that we had going on over the last year and a half. The Na National Christmas Tree stopped in downtown Dickinson. This event was supported by the CVB, DSU, and the Downtown Dickinson Association, and it was very successful. Hundreds turned out to sign the side of the truck. We resurrected two years ago um, the Parade of Lights with the help of one of our members, Tori Barnum. Um, this parade has been a huge success since we started it again, and it's a fun addition to the downtown events. Our old-fashioned Christmas stroll provides fun for the whole family with horse and horse buggy rides, street carolers, hot chocolate, and of course, Santa Claus. Our ladies' night event has been a several-year annual event that provides late-night shopping experience in our downtown area. Our trick, and, trick or trunk event is one of our largest annual events. Last year's event hosted 3,000 kids and, of course, their parents. This event provides fun, safe environment for our children. The DDA provides, whoops, sorry, annual, <laughs> our annual blues festival has grown each year. Last year, hundreds turned out for our fall event. Our vendors that were at our event said it was the best or the most successful day that they had had all year. The thunderstorm that happened later in the evening only delayed, delayed the performers for about 30 minutes, but most of the crowd stuck around for the end of the show. It was a very well attended event. The DDA also volunteers to help with the and support the uh, Odd Fellows annual first on first event. This is an event that we hope to see in our town square someday. Although torrential rain hindered this event this last year, our um, Rock Into Downtown event, it has become a fun family event and it's held in conjunction with the Rocks. Rockapalooza. A new event this year, Dress Up Downtown, was a fun adult event, or an adult prom, if you want to call it that, held at the Eagles Club. Everyone who attended had a great time. Irish You Were Beer event provided another fun adult event in downtown Dickinson, allowing fun, fun seekers to sample a beer and food pairing at close to 20 businesses. This year, new to this year's event's lineup was an event called Stupid Cupid Scavenger Hunt, a Valentine's Day shopping event that provided, th that proved even in below zero temperatures, people are willing to come out and have fun downtown. Some of our upcoming events, our DDA Rock Into uh, Downtown is coming up on May 18th. Our new DDA golf scramble that is happening first time this year is on June 21st. We'll have numerous sidewalk sales this summer. The North Dakota Downtown Conference will be held in Williston this year, and we hope to have many attend that event. 
The fifth annual Blues Festival is September 7th, Trick or Trunk, October 31st. Ladies Night Out, November the 8th, Parade of Lights, December 7th, as well as the Old Fashioned Christmas st Stroll on that same day. With the help of the CVB, we have helped provide the Roger Brooks webinar series for our members. Roger Brooks is, a known, na is known nationally for his knowledge in the fields of tourism, economic development, community development, destination marketing and branding, as well as downtown successes. After attending the North Dakota Main Street Conference last year, we immediately signed up to be a Main Street North Dakota Initiative community. This prompted a visit from our governor. He toured our downtown with city officials and key downtown stakeholders and gave his insight on some of our city plans. A public meeting afterwards was well attended by community leaders of all ages. We created a parking committee with consisting of business owners and property owners to find creative solutions to improve the downtown parking experience. We are also a member of the downtown task force. This is a city task force that was created to also assist with the city's downtown plans. The Town Square project, phase one, was a great success. We, along with the help of JLG, the firm that was awarded the RFP, held two well-attended public forums, which resulted in the current site renderings. The public input helped ensure that the community helped provide the priorities for our Town Square. An entertainment stage, children's play area, and family gathering space were among the top picks. There are many more things that are happening in our downtown Dickinson area. We support visual arts, the performing arts, community, volunteering, parties in the alleys, and shopping events throughout the year. So what's next on our agenda? We have a lot of things in front of us. Capital campaign to help with the town square, Town Square Phase 2, establishing, establishing a bid or a business improvement district, partnership between DSU and downtown as we create that corridor to our university, continual art projects, we're working currently on one with DSU uh, to help create some creative planters for downtown. Community art projects, streetscaping and beautification, a no vacancy campaign, an open late promotion to help encourage our retailers that are in the downtown area how important it is that they have hours past 5 p.m. and an infill and development partnership with Stark Development. So thank you very much for your support. My proposal uh, is a request to include funding for a continuance of the Downtown Dickinson Association Improvement District's engagement of services to support the City of Dickinson's downtown plan and the Town Square project. August of 2017, the City Commission approved funding to support the completion of the Town Square project, specifically $40,000 to hire an architectural firm to review current city plans for the town square, gain public input through the public forums, revise the town square renderings to include public input and produce a fundraising package that would support a capital campaign to be initiated by the DDA. The DDA DID was tasked with as a fiscal agent of those funds. The city commission also approved at that time Excuse me. City Commission approved the RFP award to the JLG architect firm on January 22nd of 2018. City Commission also approved $60,000 to hire an executive director to help ensure the success of the DDA and DID shared goals of the city's downtown plan, including the town square. The DDA DID board will 
would respectfully request your consideration on the following matter regarding our partnership and support for the city's downtown plan and town square project. Because the town square design engagement contract between the city and JLG includes development of a capital campaign fundraising package, and because the contract identifies the DDA DID as the fiscal agent for the campaign, development and implementation to trigger the city's funds for the town square, and because the DDA DID at this point exists only to serve in the role for the town square project, and therefore, ha therefore has no other funding for the town square monies from the city, the DDA DID board respectfully requests that the city commission include, also include funding for the completion of this shared goal. To accomplish this, we re request fun funding, including staff facilitation and oversight of this project. The goal of this support is to help coordinate future public and private investment downtown. There are examples of this type of support in some of our neighboring communities such as the city of Grand Forks, whom supported their downtown development association with $75,000 a year for three years as a partnership for that city's downtown vision. The city of Williston supports the Williston downtowners with $100,000 annually to help the city realize the vision for their downtown area. And the city of Spearfish is currently considering a partnership with the Spearfish downtown Business Association with a support of 20,000 annually as well. All of these are examples of a pri public private partnership that is put in place to realize a vision. Our vision, the DDAs, aligns with the city of the Dick uh, city of Dickinson's downtown revitalization strategy as described in the city of Dickens Dickinson's downtown plan that was created in 2014. Thank you so much for your consideration in this matter, and I would take questions. How much are you requesting again? Our request is for fifty thousand dollars for two thousand nineteen. Yes, and hopefully for the next couple of years. Thank you, Mrs. Schwartz. Any other questions, Mr. President? Um, your request is 50000 How much do you need, Mrs. Schwartz? Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> um, as you can see from our budget, um, and there are some things on our budget that we could be taking care of uh, in regards to the town square fundraising expenses that could be in a conversation later. I would tell you that a minimum of 20000 for this year for the remainder of this year would be acceptable. And staff has let you know that we want to have the discussion when it comes to budget time. Yes, yes. We to put spoke this about as a hard that. item in our budget from now on rather than trying to approve this for the future. For 2020. Yes. Right, on, yeah. right. But they need 20 for this year to finish. Mr. President. Um, Mr. Steiner. Ms. Schwartz, you and I have visited regarding this, and to be honest, after seeing this here, you were pretty humble. I'm very impressed with the amount of work that you guys have done. I mean, to date, 85 members, you yes. put together your committees, your, your board, and the list of all the work that you have. Why didn't you tell me that before? You, like I said, you were pretty <laughs> humble. Uh, Thank you, so I'm, I'm glad you put this out. You guys have been busy. You guys have been busy. And, uh, you know, this is one of our projects that the, the entire board is behind. And I think we can see where it's going. And to be honest, this is the farthest this has ever gone. And it's the best we've ever seen our money spend. And, uh, you know, I just want to give you guys a round of applause for your hard work. Your, your board, you got some big hitters on there, you got people that are involved in the community, and it just looks downright impressive. I would, uh, I know where you're going, you said you got some things going. Uh, she asked how much you really need, well you mentioned 50. 
I would have no problem for the balance of this year giving you guys 50. It's money well spent. I can see it. It's been proven with what you plan on doing. And uh, compared to the other cities, you know, I don't think we're up where they're at yet, but I think you guys are going to get us there. And I think that's a discussion that we're going to have to have as a board this summer for 2020 budget and so on is to, you know, how much are we going to make available for you guys and, and, and the job that you guys are doing. So, but, but for me, you knocked it out of the bar park with what I've seen because I know what it takes to put groups together, get things going, go out and get 85 members. And you've been hitting the sidewalk, so to you and your staff, good job. Thank you, Carson. Any other comments, questions for Mrs. Schwartz? Mr. Chairman, um, Mrs. Schwartz, Trust me. what is your fiscal year? Does it run January through December? It does, yes. Do you have any actuals for 2019? Where are you foreseeing um, in your budget? Where are you falling short? S specifically? The, for staff, for the, the staff wage. Um, because there is a number of our items that are, I mean, we have office expenses for right. sure, but our office space is donated. Um, and so there is no current utilities course we have telephone expenses those kinds of things but I would tell you that our, our big expense of course is staff when you did your budget uh, I'm just trying to understand where the shortfall is coming because um, you have your budget out here so what income is um, are you not going to reach do you think here what where is your shortfall is it with membership um, is it with donations, event income? I, I don't believe it will be with membership. That is going very well. Okay. Um, our event income is one thing that is always, uh, you know, dependent on how the events turn out. If, uh, if it's a rain out situation in a certain event, that certainly cuts into our events. We've added that the, our DDA golf tournament this year that we're in hopes that will be a, a great event for us. A fundraising event to support the downtown um, you know so there are some things that have variables for sure the sponsorships of course are up to us to go out and get but I feel real real strongly that our membership number can be what it's budgeted or at least um, and our member primarily our membership is in July our annual membership there our biggest majority of our members started in July and I would echo a lot of Commissioner Steiner's sentiments. I mean, you guys are always out there trying to do your best to make the downtown a better place. And I think everyone in this community um, has seen that. And so thank you for everything you guys have done. Uh, I agree. I think that this partnership is important. You know, part of your you know mission and vision is to en enhance the vitality of downtown. And I think you guys have really done an amazing job at doing that. And hands down the town square project we need you guys um, you're a huge part of making that successful uh, so I do understand that in more ways than one the city does need to have a partnership similar to some of those communities you pointed out I don't know if 50,000 would be where I would go I would probably hover around that 25 um, just as we have already budgeted for 2019 and then as for 2020, uh, we can look at a different contract. I think that's something we need to talk about is what we are comfortable um, with and where that is gonna come out of. I'm assuming the 30% of the 1% sales tax is probably the best location for that funding to come out of. Um, we have quite a few things coming out for 2019. Uh, so, my recommendation would be 25. That's not a motion, I, I, it's up for discussion. Mrs. Carlson, you had a comment? I was just going to state um, to Commissioner 
Uh, Sarah, that uh, the 30% is dedicated to social and economic vitality, uh, which is right, or, and or we have um, also used the hospitality tax fund, which is also to promote the um, consistence with visitor attractions and or promotions, the marketing side of things. So um, either one of them and... Do you have balances of those accounts? As of 18, when we balanced um, 18, we had a 4.6 um, million that are sitting in uh, as a balance of end of 18, and that's in the 30%. And then the hospitality, we had 612,000. Thank you. Mr. President. Well, uh, Mr. Steiner, I, I'm going to make one comment before you, I know yeah, you're going to go for a motion here. So um, I would be comfortable somewhere in between Mrs. Trustum and you. Um, and just because I think what we, we need to really take a hard look at what the expectations are in the yeah. future for everyone involved in these projects. So to get them through this year and to cover some of the unknowns, um, I know you can get by in 20. I know you proposed 25, Mr. Steiner said 50. Um, I know we have staff recommendation, and but to to move ahead, and I don't know where JLG is right now on site B, uh, but I, my understanding is we are covering the costs for that that look as a city. Mm -hmm. we that are. is true. Okay, so I know there's a request for 50. We have uh, some support for 50, 25. I would I say we'd be somewhere in between. I, I, I could support that. I, I, I'm okay with, with, with 40. I'd, I'd come down 10 if you bump up to 40. And or somewhere in the... We can uh, <laughs> feel comfortable with them with the job they're doing. If I they don't do the job... I, we'll I was thinking about yeah. 35, but... If, you they, know. if they don't do the job, we'll know by the end of this year. But I think 40 is... is I can live with that. I, yeah. They're, they're going to go to work. They're going to use it wisely. I, I think we've seen that. And, uh, you know, we want this project done and done right. And, you know, we want them out there running. We, we can't add weight to them. We've got to let them run. So what well, do you say, well, well, Ms. Like Preston? <laughs> you make the motion. <laughs> Mr. President. Mr. Steiner. I move we submit, uh, recommend uh, the 40000 for the DDA. We have a motion for 40000 Mrs. Carlson, your recommendation out of which fund would you prefer? I, I would prefer the 30% of the 1%. Okay, to come from the 30% of the 1%. And I would second that motion. Um, I wouldn't like to just provide one comment. I think it's important for any entity that's receiving public dollars to kind of show us where those expenditures are going. So if you could come back and report and just show us um, your actuals for 2019. I think uh, that would be a good way for us to show our due diligence. Absolutely. Yes. You know, like, I, like I said too, we're going to take a hard look at where we want to be in the future with the, with our 2020 budget and sure. what are expectations of any organization that we're going to be funding. Yeah. I know we pulled some subsidies this year to, to take a look at them um, because they are going to, um, the expectations are going to change. I'll just put it that way. I understand. So. We've had some great conversations together with Administrator Ga um, just regarding that very thing. So Good. certainly. We should probably have those by the time we go into budget. We should. Hopefully, Site B will have something from Site B, too, here shortly. So. Okay, so a motion for the request from the DDA at 40000 uh, to come from the 30% of the 1% with a second. Any further discussion or questions? Hearing none, we'll vote. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Mrs. Trustum? Aye. Ms. Walla? Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries. Thank you. All right, we have five o'clock that we're past, but uh, 
Our five o'clock is first one up is a public hearing, a utility easement vacation, and that'll be presented by City Administrator Gaw. Thank you, President Decker and Commissioners. This is a easement located by the Subiaco Manor in the northwest corner of town. Um, it, it appears when you look at it, it's where 24th Street West would have continued, uh, but that development never occurred. Um, and the only thing that easement was used for was a water main. Um, upon request, uh, engineering uh, took a look, uh, consulted with Apex, and they did a complete study and uh, believe abandoning that water line with all the, the new infrastructure that occurred out there is, is appropriate and that the city really does not have any need for this uh, easement and would recommend uh, vacation of the utility easement. Okay, any questions for Mr. Gaw on this vacation of our public easement? Mr. President. Mr. Steiner. Move we approve. I have a motion to approve uh, the vacation of the utility easement and the location, I'm looking it up quick here. Uh, connecting between, between 10th Avenue West and 11th Avenue West. President Decker, I would recommend this is a public hearing to at least uh, see if there are any comments okay, yes. before you move any yeah. further. If there is anyone from the uh, public that wishes to come forward, has any questions or concerns about our vacation of this utility easement, please come forward, state your name, and let us know your concerns. Anyone from the public? And this is resolution 13-2019. So we have a motion on the t uh, by Mr. Steiner to vacate this utility easement. Second. With a second. Any further discussion or questions? Hearing none, we'll vote. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Mrs. Trustum? Aye. Ms. Walla? Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries. Our second item up is uh, another public hearing, and this is the Renaissance Zone five-year extension. And this will be resolution 14-2019. And uh, city planner, or planner, Mr. Josephson. Good, good afternoon, Commissioner. Steve Josephson. I'm the Renaissance Zone coordinator for the city of Dickinson. What you have before you is, is a resolution to extend the life of the city's Renaissance Zone. It's uh, the city originally adopted it back in 2004 and according to the century code the memorandum of understanding between the state and the city is set for 15 years uh, the 15 year period is going to run out at the end of at the end of June uh, the century code allows for cities to continue to ex extend the life of their Renaissance zones at for five year increments so that's the longest they can do it at so we are here you know staff is here to to um you know to to request that city commission approve approve the um the five-year extension of the renaissance zone a couple of it items um a couple of items for for that this did go to planning and zoning commission and planning and zoning commission did vote to uh, did vote to um to support this one of the things that's happening as part of this is there are certain blocks that were part back in 2017 there were some changes made to the renaissance zone in terms of adding some new ones in and removing some others since that time you know staff has looked at so and the planning and zoning commission have looked at some other blocks where there were the potential for redevelopment is greater than some of the ones that were in there before as required by century code letters were sent out to each of the property owners of the blocks that were proposed for removal and and city the city received no no comments from from the uh, from the people who were in those in those areas anyway we're you know we're here today to ask for the approval of the resolution we're working with the state department of community affairs and after they get this information from us they are going to send us a draft memorandum of understanding that the uh, that city attorney city attorney mirtha will review along with staff. And I'm here to answer any questions you may have. Okay, thank you, Mr. Josephson. 
Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Josephson on the realignment of the Renaissance Zone? And the five-year extension. And the five-year extension. And you said there were no objections to us moving the blocks. That's correct. Okay. And sent out letters to all those folks and didn't hear any, any responses. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Josephson. Uh, this is a public hearing. If anyone from the public wishes to come forward, has any concerns or comments about the Renaissance Zone five-year extension, please come forward, state your name, and let us know your concerns. Anyone from the public? Seeing no one from the public has any concerns on the Renaissance Zone five-year extension, I'll close the public hearing. And commissioners, do you have any questions for Mr. Josephson or staff uh, or Mr. Hadley on this Renaissance Zone five-year extension and resolution 14-2019? Mr. President. Mr. Steiner. Move to approve resolution number 14-2019. We have a motion to approve 14-2019. Second. With a second. Any further discussion or questions? Hearing none, we'll vote. Mr. Steiner. Aye. Ms. Walla. Aye. Ms. Trustum. Aye. Chair vote. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Josephson. Uh, next item up is Country Oaks rezoning, and that is Planning Director Hadley. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I, I call this in the staff review a zone change correction. Back in 2012, this particular area highlighted on the map, uh, it's a lighter color surrounded in red, um, went through to the Planning Commission and both zone change applications received a zoning recommendation of approval. Unfortunately, one of them went to the City Commission and was approved and the other did not. So we found this out a few months ago. Uh, it was verified that it did go through that process. Unfortunately, in discussions with uh, Attorney Murtha, uh, her and I both agreed that circumstances have changed out there, mainly the owners um, since 2012. And so we chose to advertise this particular application again. It did just go through the Planning Commission. Uh, there was no opposition to this request and um, staff would also recommend approval um, in 2019 as they did in 2012. Um, it fits with the area, it's going to an R2 designation which is predominantly what is being developed in that area. With that, if you have any other questions, uh, please feel free to ask. Any questions for Mr. Hadley? Hearing no questions, this is a public hearing. I'll open up the public hearing. To anyone from the public that has any concerns with the Country Oaks rezoning. And this would be ordinance number 1675. So anyone from the public has any concerns with ordinance 1675, which is the Country Oaks rezoning. Please come forward, state your name, and let us know your concerns. Anyone from the public? Seeing there is no one from the public, I'll close the public hearing. Commissioners, do you have any questions for Mr. Hadley on ordinance number 1675? If not, I'd look for a motion. Mr. President, I would move to approve ordinance number 1675. I have a motion to approve 1675. Second. With a second. Any further discussion or questions for Mr. Hadley or staff on Country Oaks rezoning. Hearing none, we'll vote. Mr. Trustum? Aye. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Ms. Walla? Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries on 1675. The next item up on our timetable is the Convention Visitors and Business Annual Report. Welcome. Ms. Well, good Hill. evening. Um, thank you, President Decker, commissioners, and staff. Um, so after many years of just mailing you a printed form, we've you know gone into the technical world here, and so um, I want to present that to you. <clears throat> it is National Tourism Week. Today is National Tourism Day, and uh, the state of North Dakota, the Tourism Division, has reported that we have 22 million annual visitors, 3 billion in visitor spending, 2,800 related businesses, 
within tourism and 42,614 jobs. So um, I'll get started with this. I'm going to go through this um, if there's any questions. Then I'm going to bring up staff and we're going to do something a little bit different showing um, what uh, part they've been playing in some of our uh, marketing that's moving forward. So uh, introduction there, our mission statement, our board of directors, and our staff. And we do have some summer staff that uh, is part-time. So, um, whoops, sorry, let me go back. Okay, so um, it just shows some of our year-end highlights for that. Our occupancy has climbed a little bit. Last year, we were at 49% over 2017, which was 42.3, so we're up a little bit with that. Our average daily rate, however, is dropping almost 3%. <clears throat> that affects us just because of what we receive in the 2% lodging tax, of course, so uh, that changes our, our, uh, our income a little bit. You'll see our visitor walk-ins, that's down just a little bit from uh, the previous years. And our guest book uh, shows uh, 47 states in 16 international countries. And when I talk about the states, we just had um, uh, a review where a lot of where our marketing is going are the people who are signing in on the highest amount of numbers. So it's encouraging. Our international for last year was people who traveled from Australia, Brazil, Canada, England, France, Germany, Hungary, India, Italy, Netherlands, Philippines, Portugal, United Kingdom, Scotland, Switzerland, and Zim Zimbabwe. Those are all people who uh, put pins into our um, our map that's up on our wall. So, um, so on digital, we're just. I'm going to go through some of this very briefly because uh, Julie will again do a little bit more detailed on that. Uh, but one thing I kind of wanted to show you that uh, device category, the mobile app or views that people see is going up dramatically every year. So. We had 33,421 that came to our website via a mobile phone last year. It was, uh, now our number on there, that uh, it was actually for um, 17 that need to get changed on that, but um, it's up 17%. I've got a, just a couple errors on some, on some years on there. But the desktop down the bottom is going down. I mean, people are still viewing it, but you can see that, they're, that they are going to mobile. So um, you're going to see also um, our top CVB stats. We had um, for our website the year 62,837 versus 17 of a lower number. We're up 10%. Sessions is the number of times that they visit um, our site up 9%. Page views is down a little bit, but we're not really concerned with that because we look at that as they're getting their information. So our analytics for our top states that are visited, North Dakota, Minnesota, uh, Illinois, New York, and Texas. Um, and New York was added this year on our top five. Um, and then the top cities, we get a lot from Dickinson, but Minneapolis is very, very strong for us. Uh, Bismarck, Chicago, and New York. Um, Chicago popped up a few years ago, and now the State Tourism Division is doing specific marketing to that state. Then also our top web pages visited. Uh, is events. It's, it, it's our strongest one. And last year, our office created a hotel package for the Rockfest um, concert, and that was our second highest on the web pages. That was a sub page, as you see, created by our office. And then things to do in local attractions. Do a little bit in through our report of what we have people sign in on our comment cards that have been. Uh, uh, not only uh, positive for us, it, it's also a resource so that we make sure we're doing things right as they come in. Our audience age, 25 to 34 on our analytics, gender primarily female, and then we also look at um, when do our users visit us the most. And through the year we took a look and it was about 2 p.m. on Thursday with cumulative of 1.5 on their 4,000. So um, we also changed our website. It had been um, used, the old one, for quite a few years. We went to a sapphire.com. And um, so we had to change a lot of different things. Staff um, had an option to let the company enter information or staff do it. They chose to do it, and they have become very, very prolific at, at anything in behind and all the things that it's able to offer to us. So, and in fact, we've had many uh, different communities take a look at our site throughout 
the United States that they deal with and have liked ours on one of their top choices. So um, a little bit on some of the performance for digital. Um, this is just a little wider on what our, our uh, print shows you. but um, So we'll take a look at so what we're putting on here. Some things are cumulative between paid and also just organic within our own uh, uh, Facebook that is not paid to. So I'll, I'll leave those numbers for now. Uh, but we do both uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, all those that we do locally, but then we also go into months that are paid. And that was included in some of your information that showed that we lay out an editorial, basically, of a few months that we don't do paid advertising with digitally, and then when we do, which was in the yellow. And then it shows the target markets of where we're going, which is where we follow with tourism division. And so uh, it's broken up week by week. We start out the first week with Minnesota. We then go into Wisconsin, Michigan, and then into Illinois with those. And Julie will show a little bit more with that. Um, she'll also go into Google My Business. So last May um, that we started that. Um, we have a CVV, what we call a knowledge panel. Those photo views of uh, seven 719,000, um, 719,000 has actually been uh, upped on those numbers. That was until March. We're just short of a million on that. And we also um, claimed or verified the city of Dickinson Knowledge Panel. She'll go into that. And we've also done, or Julie has done, the North Dakota Parks and Recreation, SBD con SBDC Conference, and she was the also a speaker at the North Dakota Travel Conference that was just in Minot. So she's done those presentations. And she'll give a little bit more information on that. We do different marketing methods. Some are with print, although that has been reduced dramatically. A couple reasons, it's very expensive. Our budget has is, is been um, reduced somewhat, of course, because of the lodging tax being reduced. And so we don't do as much print, but then again, we're really focusing on the, um, the online of what people are using. So. You can see some of them that we've done in print, the travel guide um, that's there, um, the AAA living, um, things like that. And we also do our, our, uh, our guidebook and our print off map. You'll see that on there too. We have a billboard for information. We have a video at the Hailstone Rest Area, and that will be uh, changed out here just shortly. We also do, besides what we do for Facebook, Twitter, Google ads, we also do ads with the North Dakota Tourism Division on their homepage. We do e-blasts that go out. We did uh, several of those for the uh, uh, Dinosaur Museum. Uh, last May we did exclusives. We've done those several times, and they're about 2,000 uh, each time. Community outreach, we do quite a bit within the community. Uh, we work with the chamber for their high school leadership program. Um, we also um, helped assist with uh, several times with the Downtown Association, with their director. We um, organized, I created those two folders for the Museum Center for their funding opportunities. Um, we created uh, the website for the Downtown Dickinson Association, hosting the Roger Brooks every second and fourth uh, Tuesdays. We also helped out with an event at the uh, Museum Center, and then uh, we you did a lot for the uh, DSU Centennial uh, reunion last year. So uh, we also do kind of a summer each year um, just for unique retail and hospitality businesses so we can actually kind of keep track because pretty soon you can't remember when things had moved or what it opened and when. Um, we also provide state certificates for people coming in who say it's their 50th state and we actually don't do it down to their 40th. We then do a video, put them on social media. Uh, outdoor recreation, each year we provide packets to the hotels um, that have got listings for coyote hunting, pheasant hunting, things like that as hunters are coming in. They're hand stuffed and delivered. Uh, we hosted outdoor on Wisconsin Outdoors last year for a weekend and uh, we had four hunters that uh, came out and uh, we will be featured uh, as a main feature in the July 9th and August 2019 issue for that. Um, and then we've also got ads going in that. Um, our event grant program, this was one that we only administer, that's not part of our operating. And then we have a listing that was awarded in 2018. Uh, we do application forms for that. 
uh, the board reviews those. Um, Jason is on that and reviews those with us also. And then once they're finished, they do an, app, uh, an evaluation form and they have to turn in uh, copies of their expense receipts for what they were awarded. Um, meetings, conventions, Julie handles that. Um, there's a listing of some of the different ones that we've assisted and put onto our calendar listings. Um, and then meeting marketing. Uh, while she does a lot of her calls, um, also using different types of uh, communication, we do quarterly uh, postcards out to uh, about close to 370 some organizations. So the meetings um, that were in the town last year, these are not a complete list, but it's ones that we've helped that are on a larger scale with this that are listed up there. A little bit of a testimonial there um, from one of the, our people from North Dakota Solid Waste and Recycling Association. Motor coach <coughs> travel, um, we work with the leads from the North Dakota Tourism Division on that. We offer visitor bags, step-on guides, provide itineraries and such for that. And we also work with the international program with the tourism division. So North Dakota Travel Matters, that is um, a group of photos we did last year in September to highlight how travel matters for all, all different businesses and people in our community. Um, and we reached over 10,000 people and close to 16,000 impressions. Um, and you can see the list there. We did the Brick House, we did DSU uh, uh, videos, we had Parks and Rec, um, we did even the Realtors, um, we did the, uh, many different things with that. So Joel created 14 of those which are on our, our YouTube channel. And so that's what I've got for um, mine on here. I know um, that I also had um, provided some other information for you for our marketing plan, our budget. We do goals and strategies each year going over what we've accomplished, what we need to work on, um, and, uh, and go from there. So I would entertain any questions before I bring Julie up. Any questions for Mrs. Steele? Good job. Okay. I'm going to bring Julie up. She's going to talk about um, what we're doing with um, some of our social media focusing on Google. And um, this is a tool that actually I would encourage any business or organization to take a look at. It's free. There are a lot of things for Google that are free. Um, and so I'll bring her up here. Julie works with our meetings conventions and she also does um, a lot of her social media along with Joel. So I'll introduce you to Julie. Julie Obergewich. Hello, thanks for having us. Um, my name is Julie Obergewich. I've been with the Dickinson Convention and Visitors Bureau since January of 2010. I was hired to do the sales. Um, that gradually, very quickly actually transitioned into the online. I started that right away actually in January, um, a little, not even a month actually of being into my job. We started the Facebook and then that led into Twitter and um, Instagram and that developed uh, later on. Um, so currently I work with meetings, reunions, conventions, uh, sports events, and also trade shows. I recruit them and also assist, assist them with our free meeting planning services. We have a lot of free things um, that we help groups with, such as um, meeting planning um, tools like uh, name badges, uh, the bags that Terry mentioned. We offer room block assistance. Um, we'll actually create a video for those as well. If they give us the photos, there's a lot of um, things that we offer groups as a thank you for meeting in Dickinson. Um, like I said, so our, my role has additionally developed into online sales for the leisure market. And tonight, I'd like to cover what the Dickinson CVB does with our online marketing. If at any point you have questions, just stop and let me know. I'd be happy to answer them. So in 2017 and 2018, the, 20, the Dickinson CVB began online advertising and we have refined our ads target markets and also analytic reports going into 2019. The Dickinson CVB's online paid advertising is through the online platforms of Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, and also YouTube, which are highlighted there on the screen. Uh, the graphic shows four different kinds of ads that we have created thus far in 2019. The ads are all unique and the featured content and also to the areas that we advertise to. Our ads always include a learn more or a visit us area where they can click to go to a specific landing page on our website, visitdickinson.com. As Terry mentioned earlier, there are different areas that we have targeted with our ads. 
Um, we do follow the North Dakota Tourism's um, marketing schedule, and they have found that the most beneficial areas to market to include the states of Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Illinois. Those are the areas that we currently advertise to each and every week. Every Thursday, um, I create ads. I do Facebook. Um, Facebook goes into the Instagram. We do one ad for that. And then I create a separate um, Twitter ad. And then I also create a separate Google ad as a static ad. And then I also do um, a YouTube ad that will go that entire month's duration. Um, we have seen an exciting interest from the Chicago area. Um, which we also have seen in our website analytics. So that's, um, it's really cool to see that, that there's people out of our state, um, even in Chicago, that are interested in our area of Dickinson. Um, these highlight some of the different ads that we have created um, on Google um, this year. All online ads for Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Google, and YouTube are all created entirely by the CVB staff. Um, this is a very unique feature. Um, most CVBs in the state rely on an ad agency. We do not. Everything is created in-house. We use our own talents, our capabilities to create it in-house. Saves us money, and we do a really great job at it. I, I really, I have to say, because I'm one of the ones that do it. So, <laughs> and um, the things that we produce are very nice. We get nice results from them. In 2019, we're taking a more aggressive approach on, on our advertising and um, we are targeting more on Google, which is the world's largest search engine that we will get into in a bit. Um, and this slide shows, uh, shows some of the ads that we did featuring the Badlands Dinosaur Museum um, for the month of March. And also there is more on this page as well. Um, it's just another sampling of a variety of ads that were shown on Google, um, also uh, Gmail, um, YouTube. Um, they all look very nice and um, we, we did all of them. Um, this is another ad selection of ads that we created for the Theodore Roosevelt National Park. Um, this was featured on Google um, in the month of April, so just uh, last month. So a nice selection there of the ads that we did. Um, the CVB not only creates the ads, ads, but we also select the keywords, the demographics, and also the topics, and also the audiences for all ads. Um, we, it's, it's ours, and we, um, like I said, we, we see the the clicks coming back to our website as well so we definitely see the results from all of these ads and this just shows a little more of the Theodore Roosevelt National Park um, as you can see in the photos we like to feature people having experiences um, or breathtaking scenery in our National Park the National Park is a huge draw for us most of our travelers coming into our office are actually on their way to the National Park um, as it was named the number five place to visit in the entire world by the New York Times um, in recent years so we're going to get into Google, and I'm kind of the Google girl. I love it, um, but why do we use it to promote Dickinson? I mean, everybody's on it, but why do we use it to promote Dickinson? There's a lot of really great reasons why we do. Um, this is pretty um, self-telling right here. Google in 2018 was the number one, and still is in 2019, the number one search engine, taking up 65% of the total searches in 2018. Um, as we look at our own analytics on our website, again, it's visitdickinson.com. I, I did a search um, of the uh, May 2nd to May, um, May 2nd, so an entire year, so you can see um, our website traffic. And what I want to highlight is actually the organic traffic, our organic search over here in the bottom left. So we had a little over 42,000 um, people searching organically for Dickinson Convention and Visitors Bureau. So you may wonder, what does organic mean? That is people physically typing into a Google search, Dickinson Convention and Visitors Bureau, and that's where our results are. But we can actually break that down even further, and we can go into how much of that, um, that traffic actually came from each search engine. Um, Google's right at the top. 90% of those people are coming directly from Google to our website, visitdickinson.com. We're tracking it, and we're being present on it to um, meet those people before they even land on our page with great information about Dickinson. So first of all, this is what people would typically do. They would go to Google, type in Dickinson Convention and Visitors Bureau. So what comes up next is something really cool um, that actually all businesses have the capability to do, and I, I really wish that more would do it. So on the right-hand side here, this is called our Google Knowledge Panel. Um, what we did is I claimed it. Um, we, there was an area in there where you can claim to verify and also claim the page, and we did that. We took ownership of it, and 
Um, and we began our Google journey, as I kind of like to cornily call it. Um, so what is the Google Knowledge Panel? So again, we claimed it on April 6th, April 26th of 2018. So we attended the North Dakota Travel Conference in late April of last year. Um, one of the sessions was on claiming your Google Knowledge Panel and the importance of it. Um, I came back home, researched it a little bit, claimed our account, and here we are today. Dickinson CVB was the first CVB in the entire state to claim their knowledge panel. And just a little bit about this, um, you cannot view this in an Internet Explorer browser. This is actually only in a Chrome because it, Chrome is a Google product. So um, just so you know, if you're searching it on your phone or um, at home later, on a, um, Internet Explorer, you will not see it. This is only Google, but like I said, most people are on it, so um, it works really nice. There's a lot of very nice things that we can do in our Google um, Knowledge Panel. Um, there's tons of information that we can update. And updating your information is so important because as people are searching to find us in Google, um, it's important to have all this information as updated and as current as possible. Um, that includes your business name, um, also categories, um, you can have one main category and as many subcategories as you want, so we really um, strive to have a complete um, listing there of our categories. Um, of course, an address and service areas is important. Um, updating your hours is an extremely important so people know how to find us. Special hours, you know, if we're open on, you know, um, 4th of July or Christmas, we would put that in there. Um, phone numbers, of course, we always have our 800 number. Um, directing people back to our website, um, services and attributes, and then of course a description. The description is extremely important because that is where people are, that, it, that information we're actually putting directly on Google. So if people are searching um, Google, it's, it's right there on it, so it makes it really nice and easy to find us um, from that search. So we're gonna get a little more into the photos um, later because there's some really cool things about the photos that I wanna mention. Um, but within our own um, area on the back end of our Google My Business, um, it's important to add some great photos and videos. Everybody wants a nice video. Everyone wants a great photo. Photos tell, tell a story. They give you credibility. And um, it, it just makes the town and the business, um, like I said, more credible um, by having that updated content. So there's also different kinds of Google posts that we feature on our page. Um, the what's new post is, I guess you can think of it like a social media post. Um, and then also there's an event post. And our, we, we, we feature things that are Dickens and we feature things that are um, great to our area that people would like to come and see, such as you know the Enchanted Highway, the National Park, um, the Ukrainian Cultural Institute, of course, there, and, and then the event of the Shrine Circus. Um, we can include hashtags and we can also include um, the learn more option where people can click that and that always is going to go back to our page We always want a great landing page from these posts on our website visit Dickinson.com um, Some different insights that we can see on our Google posts include how many people not only viewed the posts But also how many people clicked on the posts and again, we can track this um, On our website because we can see how much traffic is actually coming um, From the from the Google posts, which is which is very nice um, this is a really um, nice feature that we um, started in May of last year as well. It's called Google Local Guides. And um, I started contributing, contributing to them again in late May of 2018. Um, the main thing that we're going to focus on about this are the photo contributions here. You can see 587. Also the edits are extremely important too. We've had a 136 edits. So what that means is we've added 587 photos of businesses in Dickinson, attractions in Dickinson, lodging, dining, shopping, um, visitor things that they would enjoy doing in Dickinson. Um, edits, that would include like if we added a website for a business, um, if we updated their hours, if there was a missing phone number, um, if a business has closed. Um, I can do all of that um, through our uh, local guide service and really it's a win-win. It's not only a win-win for Google to have updated information But it's an, a win-win for that business that I added the information for because it just makes Dickinson look that much better With updated information when people come to our town and it just adds a really nice value um, to the community um, So the Google local guides po uh, photos this the photo on the left is just a um, I guess really a partial view of um, some of the areas in town that I've added photos for. 
Um, but what I really um, enjoy showing is on the right hand side there. Um, so on Monday, April 8th of this year, this was just prior to the travel conference, so I, I showed them this as well. Um, at that time, we had 368 photos that I had added with a little over um, 827,000 views. Um, that day, I added 53 photos. Um, by the end of the day on Tuesday, we had an increase of almost 7,500 views in 17 hours of those photos. So what does that mean? That means that people are on Google. They're searching not only Dickinson, but they're searching photos in our area. That's why it's so important to have all of this content updated. But like I said, we're just making Dickinson look that much better um, by having all these photos. Um, I wanted to show you a few photos here of different ones that I've added um, and just how many views they get. It's really astonishing. Um, this one up here, these were added on behalf of the city of Dickinson. As you can see, the West River Community Center, over 200,000 views. Um, the one right below it um, is the chapel up at the um, Museum Center, a little over 132,000 views. We have also added, like I said, photos for dining, um, the Brick House, over 98,000 views. You guys, this is only since May of last year. This is not even a year's worth of analytics. And these are actual, you know, you can't always track, you know, how many people are viewing a photo on your website or how many people are viewing things on, on your, um, you know, they may be looking at your content, but you don't know that hardcore number. We have that right here. And that's why we're so active on it because we see the results. Griffin Theaters has been huge for us, um, over 81,000 views on that one photo. Um, a little more here, the Badlands Dinosaur Museum, over 81,000 again. Um, DSU was added on behalf of, um, that's on our Dickinson page, um, over 62,000 views. Um, again, we have the Brick House over there. Um, it's one of the top viewed photos, over 43,000 views. And then the Pioneer Machinery Hall has been nice as well with um, over 41,000. Um, People are on Google, and we're, we are too, and we, it's really been um, great for the town. Um, so our starting point for adding photos on Google was near the end of May of 2018. Uh, the graphic here shows the number of photo views as of yesterday. So as of yesterday, we had 967,729 views of photos that I've added for the city of Dickinson. Um, uh, today, it is again National Tourism Day, as Terry, as Terry said, um, check the number before I came over. Um, we're at 981,681 views for these photos. We had an increase of almost 14,000 views in one day. This makes me very happy and businesses should be extremely happy about this as well because again, it's just adding to that great value of their business and the town. It just makes it that much more desirable. Um, as Terry mentioned, we are almost to that 1 million views, and we'll surely have it by the end of the week, if not in a couple of days. Um, we actually have a bet going on in our office to see when we're going to hit that 1 million views, and we were actually way off because we thought it would be much later um, in the month. So Google posts to Dickinson, North Dakota. So not only do we post to our page, but we're also posting to the city page. And this is extremely unique, um, and we'll get into that as well. So when you search Dickinson, on the um, right hand side there, again, you're gonna see the knowledge panel and this highlighted um, by the image on the left. Again, we're posting um, information and then it's going back to our website um, to make the visitor um, attracted to come to the area and see what we all have um, to offer. So the Dickinson posts, um, it's something that I started, um, I claimed our page on May 30th of last year. Um, this is something really exciting. Um, on May 31st, one day later, um, Florida claimed their page. Florida was the very first state to claim their page. Dickinson claimed our city page one day prior. Makes me extremely happy again. Um, there's three total states in the entire United States who have claimed their state pages. North Dakota is not one, unfortunately. Florida, Minnesota, and Colorado are the ones. Um, we are, Dickinson CVB is the only entity in North Dakota to post to Google on behalf of a city. No other cities are able to do this. This is a free service. Um, so you may, might wonder why aren't other cities doing this? What happened? Why isn't North Dakota posting to it? Um, it's a simple thing. Google turned off the feature. We were basically grandfathered in and it's, we just, because I jumped on it right away and got in on it, we were able to post to our city page and we are still able to post to our city page and get these great numbers. Um, North Dakota, was looking into it, but like I said, unfortunately, they were just a little too late. 
Um, we've had 116 total posts. Uh, we had three in the last um, seven days. I like to post every other day. Uh, a little over 334,000 views of those pages. Um, it's, it's great. It's really, really great. And it's free, which I love. Um, the Google Post Analytics, so these are the post analytics to the city page. Um, you can, again, track the views and also the interaction rate. And also, again, those um, analytics are going back on our website. So we're seeing all that traffic. And on the left-hand side there, um, that is a video that Joel created on the cafes and diners um, that he got photos from the Dickinson Museum Center. The historic photos have been fantastic for us. People, people just eat them up. They just love them. Um, this is also something I want to highlight. The top five largest U.S. cities um, who post to their Google Knowledge Panels. The, there's the top five cities. New York is the only city in the or is the only city in the top five that posts to their Google Knowledge Panel. In fact, I went a little deeper in that and I searched the top ten largest cities in the entire United States. New York is still the only city that posts. Not a, none of the top ten even post, but Dickinson is. So that's that's cool as well. Um, we're going to wrap up here with some web analytics. Um, these are the number of sessions uh, per visits per month um, to our website. We are up 47% thus far from January until April. Um, and it's, it, it's really great. You know, we can attribute this to many of the things that we talked about. Um, and also, the number of people visiting our site per month is also up a nice 48%. Again, every month they've been increasing. and we feel it can be accredited to not only our online presence through our social media advertising, but also by having a visible presence on Google. Um, and we're definitely seeing the traffic back to our website, and we're really happy with the results. And um, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them, and then we'll bring up Joel. Any questions for Mrs. Obergevich? Pretty um, impressive. Julie, um, yeah. the... Um, you're coordinating with, on, on our city page, since you guys have claimed it, you're coordinating with our staff and the museum on content? We post content for everyone. I mean, we'll post content on the Museum Center, we post it on um, events in Dickinson, we post it on the Ukrainian Cultural Institute. There's, there's a lot of different entities that we post on um, for in Dickinson. Yeah, so they present the content and you just add it then? or? Actually, I haven't been presented with any content. We just we share content that we think that the visitor would be interested in. Is what we so if we want to put out a certain message, then absolutely we need to. Okay. Yeah, let me know, and I'd be happy to add it. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other questions? Well, thank you, Julie. I know how much work you guys do over there, and I think those numbers speak for themselves. And I thank you. I think when we're trying so hard to recruit and retain a workforce, it's it's important to have a a, a viable uh, online presence that can really showcase what our community has to offer. So, thank you. Thank you. I'm going to have Joel then come up, Joel Walters, and he's been with us for many years. In fact, he started right after high school, <laughs> and uh, so he's been here a long time. But he uh, he does a lot of our administrative um, duties, but he's also moved into another one too. And he's doing a lot with, he does our Instagram, but the other thing he also does is our photography and then uh, the videos. And so he'll, he's just going to explain a little bit of it. We're going to show you some quick videos, it'll be about five, six minutes, and then we'll, we'll be done. But, so. Thank you, and good evening. Uh, I should mention my name is Joel Walters. And uh, this evening, what I'd like to do is just very briefly share a couple of the clips of some of our video with you. Um, the CBB has been doing video for the last couple of years, but really until last, last year was when we really started to have a concerted effort towards adding a lot of that video into our marketing, especially on uh, social media and digital marketing. So uh, we've got a wide variety of video. You can go on YouTube to view a lot of that. I think we have over 100 videos put out there on YouTube. Many of those are also on our social media. Um, we have some that are real short, and we're, ac we're actually finding that for the paid um, video that we're putting out on social media, the shorter videos are the most effective. So between seven seconds up to maybe 15 seconds, that's really where we're putting a lot of our money. People like to just be able to scroll through their phones where, where they're viewing most of their, uh, of their media, be able to watch it very quickly and then move on. Um, we do longer videos, of course. A lot of that is for local advertising. We do put a lot of that uh, out on our social media, but we're not putting as much money towards those kind of videos. Um, 
I think a lot of this, uh, the impetus for us moving forward and, toward, and adding our video into our, um, into our marketing was that, as was mentioned, last year the North Dakota uh, Tourism Division ran the North Dakota Travel Matters campaign. And, and as Terry mentioned earlier, that was uh, a statewide effort. And uh, the Tourism Division asked different uh, cities, different CVBs, different attractions throughout the state to partner with them uh, and to uh, use that opportunity to really feature their community or their attraction during that particular uh, time period. So we were given the month of September, and during the month of September, we really uh, hit the uh, hit the ground hard with um, promotions for Dickinson. So leading up to that, um, over the summer months, we put a lot of uh, time into taking a lot of video footage, and kind of as that was all developing, we began to realize how valuable this was. We now have hundreds of clips uh, that we have saved in our archives of uh, video footage from all over town. Uh, different uh, lodging, dining, attractions, uh, regional attractions, the national park, and on and on. So we have those that are at our resource now whenever we need them, uh, and that's really kind of, um, we've realized how valuable this is for us, and we've kind of tried to include that as we uh, begin to develop our marketing for 2019. Um, just want to mention, we, we do everything, and we really try to be as affordable as possible in how we do this. Uh, all the video that I shoot is done on my iPhone. So we're not using fancy cameras, we're not using a lot of fancy equipment, it's, it's really uh, done very affordably. I do some of the editing for the video on my phone, I do all of my photo editing on my phone, and then we do have a program called Wondershare by Filmora that we use for uh, the other video editing. So it's very affordable, um, and we're able to do all of this in-house. Again, we don't have any, any advertising agencies helping with this, we do all the video creation in-house. So we're going to show five very short video clips uh, this evening. Um, one of them is going to be just featuring coffee shops. So in the off season when we're not really heavily promoting uh, the area to the outlying areas or to some of the states that were mentioned, we do try to reach out to uh, communities in southwestern North Dakota and, uh, and to those living within our own community uh, to solicit regional attendance during the off season. So we've got one on coffee shops that we're going to show, uh, one featuring the Badlands Dinosaur Museum. Of course, that it continues to be one of our top draws to Dickinson. Um, and then back after the uh, Crooked Crane Trail was uh, finished we did put out a video you'll notice if you go back to the archives of our videos on YouTube some of our older videos were created just using static photos we kind of set them up like a slideshow we'd have music playing in the background and video or uh, photos would just be kind of scrolling across the screen some of them are set up that way we're now trying to incorporate a lot more video footage in these uh, but the Crooked Crane Trail video that you're gonna see just has a lot of photos um, and then we do have um, a TV screen running in the Hailstone rest area uh, just as you leave Mandan on the uh, westbound of Interstate 94, we have a video running in there 24-7, so we just finished up another video that we're going to be putting out um, into that rest area probably this week or next, and that really highlights visitor experience. So for anybody westbound on 94, we're really trying to uh, attract them to what Dickinson offers and kind of um, feature that as a hub for the southwestern North Dakota area, and then include information on uh, outdoor experience and attractions such as the uh, Enchanted Highway or um, Assumption Abbey, Dinosaur Museum, all that kind of thing. So that'll be included in that video. And then lastly, we'll have the, um, one of the historic videos that we've been putting up featuring the photos from the Dickinson Museum Center. If you're not aware, they have an archive with thousands of historic photos uh, from several different photographers. Um, and uh, they're very popular. We get a lot of great response, a lot of great interaction on our social media using these photos. And so we put a few of them into video format. We're going to show one of those featuring some of the uh, bars in Dickinson from years past. So we'll go ahead and take a look at that real quickly here.
So as you can see, there's a variety of different videos depending on who we're marketing uh, to, directing our marketing towards, uh, and what message we're trying to get across. Some of it is, um, of course, trying to bring folks to Dickinson, like I mentioned, and some of it is just to create a buzz on our social media or on our website uh, and draw people to it and keep activity there uh, in the off season especially. So we talked a lot about uh, statistics. Uh, Julie shared a lot of those numbers. And I just want to finish off this evening by sharing two uh, numbers um, from probably our largest platforms as far as video is concerned. So YouTube, and I'm talking in the last year, so May of 2018 until this month, um, our YouTube video views within the past year were 47.2 thousand uh, on the videos that we have up on YouTube right now. So that's a very significant number. And then on Facebook, which of course is a um, more heavily trafficked platform, we have 57.5 thousand views just on our videos alone. So that's not talking uh, posts and photos and that kind of thing, just just the video views alone. So we're very, uh, very excited by that. Um, and we do believe that we're seeing some of those numbers then translate into visits to Dickinson as well. So we're uh, looking forward to more success this year. Are there any questions for me at this point? Any questions? Yeah, great work. I, I, I think I, um, I saw Mr. Steiner had like a flashback there with the, <laughs> Palm, <laughs> when the Palm Beach. Palm Beach. Yeah, the Palm Beach yeah. Road uh, bar flashed up there, so I thought he shuddered a little bit. So. Unfortunately, you're, you're correct. I, I, <laughs> but, but it was getting nice. <laughs> so. well, well, thank, thank you very much. Yep, thank yeah. you. Uh, great work. Thank you very much. Any uh, questions before we move on for the CVB? All right. Again, thank you very much for all the work you do. Uh, we'll be moving into uh, engineering. And... Um, Oh, wait, no, we have one, yes, one last administrative item, and that is, um, Mr. <coughs> Goss going to present this, but uh, just uh, to preface what Mr. Goss is going to present, it's been brought to my attention that there's some, uh, some need. We have funded $1.6 million for the uh, Dickinson Airport over the next four years. Uh, we have spread that out over four years, but uh, there has been some, uh, through the negotiations they had to acquire the land to extend the, the runway, they have uh, come up with some um, needs earlier than anticipated. So what we are going to propose, or Mr. Ga is going to talk about, is uh, shifting some of that $1.6 in dollars uh, to make them uh, available a little bit earlier to them. So Mr. Ga? Yes, that's a, that's a pretty good summary. <coughs> As uh, President Decker outlined, the commission said four four years, four hundred thousand dollars, a total of one point six. Uh, with uh, some of the upfront construction construction costs as they're getting started, they've requested that we, in 2019, amend that to five hundred thousand uh, rather than four hundred thousand, and then we just balance it out a little bit, take a look at the next few years, and likely update that in the 2020 budget. But this is just a uh, approval of an amendment. Uh, to go from 400,000 to 500,000 for this year. Any questions for Mr. Gar or myself? And we spoke with Mrs. Carlson and it's since the money has been appropriated over the next 4 years we can make that adjustment. So Mr. President, I'd move we go ahead and approve the uh, new formula. Second. All right, we have a motion to approve the adjustment to the airport funding with a second. Any further questions or comments? Hearing none will vote, Mr. Steiner. Aye. Mrs. Trustum. Aye. Ms. Walla. Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries. And I will thank you in advance. I had this um, discussion with uh, Mr. Brown, the airport manager, and we, uh, like I said, it was just unanticipated costs, and we're, we need to get this project going to get that runway done. Um, moving on to engineering, we have a NDO, DOT, CPM agreement, and public works directors are off. We'll be handling it. Yes, thank you, President Decker. Uh, the first agreement I have is <coughs> the cost participation and maintenance agreement for the 10th Avenue West. Um, Street Mill and Overlay project. This is from 15th Street to 21st Street. Uh, this is a project, an urban project with the North Dakota Department of Transportation. And with that, it's federally funded, uh, which will be uh, paid for uh, 
up to 80.93% of the maximum of $680,000 uh, by the state of North Dakota. The remaining will be, fun re will be funded from the city's 50% of the 1% sales tax. Um, this is one of the two maintenance agreements that need to be uh, approved before the bid, bid date of May 10th. Um, I guess if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Any questions for Mr. Zeroff on this uh, CP, uh, CPM agreement with the uh, North Dakota DOT? Mr. President, I would move to approve the agreement. We have a motion to approve the agreement. For the second, and are any uh, further questions, comments for Mr. Zeroff? Mr. President, just a comment. And you know, in the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about city taxes and, and so on. But this is a good example here of uh, the 1% sales tax that, that we have. And when you take an issue of 680000 to do that project up there, and uh, you know we get 80% from the DOT, but the other 20% has to come from somewhere, and that's coming out of our 50% of 1% sales tax. So people are asking, where's all this money? Where's all this money? Uh, I think the last time I checked is last year we've taken over $2 million out of that 50% for infrastructure. So these next few items is going to be money coming out of that 1% sales tax. So now you know where some of your money coming for the streets are. I agree with Mr. Steiner. We are putting dollars towards these projects on a continuous basis. And uh, we try to leverage as much as possible any federal or state participation so um, we um, have to thank staff for all their work on projects like this so uh, again we have a motion to approve with a second any further comments or questions now we'll vote Mr. Trustum aye Ms. Walla aye Mr. Steiner aye Chair votes aye motion carries uh, Mr. Zeroff, uh, 12th Street. Yeah, um, thank you, President Decker and Commission. Uh, the next uh, cost participation and maintenance agreement is for the 12th Street uh, uh, from the hillside or from the end of the concrete on 12th Street to State Avenue. Uh, this is the Mill and Overlay project, again, an urban project with the North Dakota Department of Transportation, uh, again, federally funded at the 80.93%. And this is federally funded up to the max of 880. The differences are the engineer's estimates on these projects. And again, the remaining will be funded by the, from the city's 50% of the 1% sales tax. Uh, again, the project bid date is May 10th, and staff recommends approval. Okay, any questions for Mr. Zeroff? Hearing no questions, I look for a motion on the 12th Street from State Avenue to Hillside, uh, excuse me. 12th Street approve. from State Avenue to Hillside Drive. We have a motion to approve. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. Second. Any uh, further discussion or questions for Mr. Zeroff? Hearing none, we'll vote. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Ms. Trustum? Aye. Ms. Walla? Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries. Thank you, President Decker and Commission. The Next uh, item is an MOU with Stark County. It's the uh, first of two MOUs tonight. Uh, this memorandum of understanding uh, is between Stark County and the city of Dickinson um, on 34th Street or our 40th Street from Highway 22, or you could call it 3rd Avenue to 113 interim bypass. Um, this is the Seal Coat project, and uh, it was determined that the split between county and city was 75-25, 25% being the city's portion. Uh, and the estimate uh, for the city's portion is $100,000, or excuse me, the estimate for the, the Seal Coat project is $100,000, and the estimate for the city's share is approximately $25,000. Um, uh, it's one of the two uh, agreements, and working with Stark County is, uh, uh, seemed to be working well, th very well this year, and uh, staff recommends approval. Any questions for Mr. Zeroff on this MOU? Hearing none, I look for a motion. Mr. President, I move to approve. We have second. a motion to approve with a second. Any further discussion? Questions for Mrs. Zeroff on this MOU with Stark County? 
Hearing none, we'll vote. Ms. Walla? Aye. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Ms. Trustum? Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries. Mr. Zeroff, you have a 2019 mill and overlay bid. Yes, this is the what we call the city mill and overlay. Um, it was uh, the bids for this project was were opened uh, April 18th. Uh, we had one bidder, Northern Improvement Company, uh, with a bid of one million five hundred eighty-eight thousand four hundred twenty-one dollars and thirty cents. Uh, this project includes mill and overlay on Fairway Street from Third uh, Avenue West to Thirteenth Avenue West, Park Street, Hillside Drive, and some sections just north of 9th Street East. Um, this is our what we call our annual city's mill and overlay. Um, uh, it is a little over the engine, engineer's estimate, uh, but uh, the consultant and staff recommends approval. Any questions for Mr. Zeroff on this mill and overlay bid? Mr. Zeroff. Yep. How many bids do we usually receive on these types of projects? Uh, n normally one to two. Okay. Yes. So this is pretty standard. Yep. You're normally lucky to get two. You usually get one, and then it's at their discretion when they can do the work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, I know it's that's the issue we have, you know, with fixing or uh, any of the, the patches is when the, the plant can can begin. And luckily, right now we're doing some, but uh, yeah, dependent on one contract. And I heard a lot of crews are moving to Wyoming this year. About two so, weeks. So we need to get this done. Mr. President, I would move to approve the bid. We have a motion to approve the mill and overlay bid for 2019. Second. Any questions or further comments for Mr. Zeroff on this bid? Hearing none, we'll vote. Mrs. Trustum? Aye. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Ms. Walla? Aye. Chair sure votes aye. Motion carries. Uh, Mr. Gah, you have a Highlands Engineering Task Order for our master plan layout. Yes, thank you, President Decker and Commissioners. In the 2019 budget, there was funding set aside for the engineering department to do a master plan for uh, an area in the northwest part of town. The area is uh, located east of 30th Avenue Northwest, south of 21st Street Northwest, west of State Avenue, and north of Interstate 94. Uh, attached, you have a task order from Highland Engineering to complete that for $10,000, which is included in the budget. Okay, any questions for Mr. Gaw on this task order? I'm looking really quick here for the task order number. It is task order number 190001-01. Move to approve said task order. We have a motion to approve second. with a second. Any questions or comments on this task order for the master plan layout? Hearing none, we'll vote. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Mrs. Trustum? Aye. Ms. Walla? Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries on this task order. Uh, we'll move into public works. And Mr. Zeroff, you have a large memorandum of understanding with Stark County. Yes. Uh, thank you, President Decker and Commission. Uh, this memorandum of understanding is for East Ballard. East Villard uh, this year has deteriorated beyond the point of patching. Uh, last couple years we've spent numerous weeks uh, and hours and trying to patch. This year it's beyond that point. Um, portion of that road, 27% uh, of that road is county. So uh, we met with uh, Al Heiser, Stark County and Northern and uh, Stark County does have a annual agreement with, for patching and mill or for overlay. So it was agreed upon that the county will uh, hire Northern, do the work uh, for leveling, uh, do a leveling course on East Villard and then do a uh, overlay on it. We're trying to repair some of the uh, more significant areas right now uh, on the east end, uh, but hopefully that'll happen soon. So we're scrambling to get that done. Um, estimate uh, of the 70 uh, whatever, 73 percent um, of the project for the city is two hundred sixty thousand two hundred eighty eight dollars and eighty cents I think that's well worth the money uh, we had uh, 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 overlaid the, the last east east portion I think about a year ago uh, and 
we've had this street on the uh, CIP project and it was part of the transportation. And to redo that street, we were looking at five or six million, so it's been kind of put to the side. This, I think, will support that road for a long time for $266,000. So, um, Don't we have that full length scheduled for about three years down the road? Uh, we haven't. It was at one point. Um, it was on our um, uh, on our CIP, and then and actually it was part of the um, uh, street uh, assessments too when we first looked at. That. Am I thinking of the just, wrong area? Yeah, I, I, thought I was going to say just to clarify for Mr. You're Steiner, yeah. the 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 one road is DOT is scheduled for 21, 22 yes, in that time frame. Area. But the road that shoots past the the, uh, the house life. of man and livestock. You're going south of okay, gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. gotcha. yep. Um, and in, so in Mr. Old Zeroff old is yep. in, in Mr. Zeroff is not kidding. I drove this road yesterday. Um, I there are portions of it that I have never seen that road like that. This is falling apart. Mm -hmm. So it's from Quint, yep. the old Quinn City Lumber to uh, Energy Drive. Yeah. Yeah. So I was hoping we didn't let that DOT project go, so I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we still have that. <laughs> glad it's the south yeah. side of that. Yeah. Sorry I misunderstood that yeah. question. So. so, yeah, this is fixing basically between Base Blue Trailer and the Livestock yeah. and the old Queen yeah. City Club yeah. out to uh, what used to be Continental Metal, I right. think. Right, uh, the track, so. I think it's from Robertson's now, it's called. So. And as you said, um, uh, the contract won't be around many more weeks, right. so we're jumping on this to try to get it done as soon as we can. Any other questions for Mr. Zeroff on this MOU? Mr. President, I move we approve. We have a motion to approve. Second. With a second. Any questions, <coughs> comments for Mr. Zeroff? Hearing none, we'll vote. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Ms. Walla? Aye. Ms. Trustum? Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries. Uh, Mr. Zeroff, we have a Apex Engineering Task Order number five for the water model. Yes. Thank you, uh, President and Commission. Apex Engineering Group was selected to perform the engineering services for our water model. The services include updating the water distribution model to current conditions. Since now that everything is built, um, we had some model before, but that was well before any of our infrastructure was, was uh, completed. Uh, it also to provide routine updates as infrastructure is added or decommissioned. Also to perform on-call water modeling tasks. <coughs> Excuse me and to make recommendations to future water main, pump and storage improvements, et cetera. Uh, engineering and public work staff uh, recommend approval. And this was a budgeted item um, for 2019. Okay, any questions for Mr. Zuroff on the uh, task order from APEX? Mr. President, I would move to approve the task order number five. I have a motion to approve task order number five. Second. For the second. Any further discussion or questions? Hearing none, we'll vote. Mrs. Trustum? Aye. Mr. Steiner? Aye. Ms. Walla? Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries on the Apex Task Order Number 5. Uh, we have a couple of reports. The first one up is the Urban Forestry Committee, and that'll be City Forester Quam. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and hello, Commissioner. Um, I just want to bring up, and you probably got this information, uh, of the list of the renewal of the Urban Forestry Committee. Um, in the past, some time ago, I am not sure exactly what the date was, they were combined with the Planning Commission, and the thing is, is they've just been kind of, uh, been just basically, I, I guess, handling the, uh, certain of the minimal decisions and, and requirements of it um, in the ordinance of the forestry ordinance it's uh, the committee is basically an advisory group but it's also um, a group of partners that will be you know for future projects as far as relating to forestry and so the list I submit would like to submit to you for approval is uh, Kurt Freilich from County agent from the ND, he represents NDSU Extension Service. Craig Pearson, he's with Buildings and Sites with the Dickens and Parks and Rec. And Bob Klein, uh, as well as Bonnie Tugud, uh, they are both with the Stark Billings uh, Soil Conservation District. 
uh, Mick Ritt uh, Reisinger. He's a facilities operations with the Dickinson State University. Monica Armstrong, she's a uh, member at large, but she's also uh, owns and runs the local nursery in the southwest part of town. Um, John Duchuk, commander of the AMVETS, post number 22. And Jacob Zettel, who is representing uh, Montana Dakota Utilities. As you can see, all these ag agencies or these members have something to do with forestry and a stake in it. And I think, you know, we can expand those cooperations and make uh, more benefit through our projects. Um, I'd like to also make a uh, note that um, that we have a, uh, we're celebrating Arbor Day this month, coming up on May 22nd at 9 a.m. At the, at the Dinosaur Museum. And we would like to welcome you all. It's a part of a, also part of the Public Works Week. And so we would like you to join there. Uh, we will also be, have a North Dakota Forest Service representative, which will uh, give us uh, our, basically our uh, 26 year uh, Tree City USA designation flag and, and and other uh, uh, materials. And uh, uh, so we've got that activity coming up as well as uh, in June, the 17th through the 19th. Uh, on the schedule, it's wrong. It says 7 to 9 p.m., but we're planning on from 5 to 7 p.m. when it's, we've got some beautiful evenings out there with the, still get some sun, and I'm planning to do uh, working with the experiment station on, uh, on uh, tree identification, going out and taking a tour actually of conifers one night, deciduous trees, and how to plant the tree, basically aimed at you know, basically anybody interested in trees, but you know a lot of the new homeowners that are looking for that type of information. And uh, worked with uh, some of the extension, and they had a spring uh, fling this morning, uh, this spring uh, program, and it seems like the five to seven hours seem to work the best to get the crowds in there. So, uh, basically, that's what I have presented there. Okay. Any uh, questions for Mr. I'm, Paul? I'm happy to see the Urban Forestry Committee, committee established again. Yes. Uh, the tree planting and Arbor Day and so on. I was on the very first forestry committee. Oh, okay. Uh, I remember two other ones there, Doc, Dr. Henrik's mother and Dr. Keller's wife. And uh, I think it was about 30 some years ago when I was about 10. <laughs> I was going to say, coincidentally, it was held at the Palm Beach Road Bar. <laughs> I remember we had a good committee. We started it, and, and uh, you know, right. great to see it come back. And if we get a time drain with the nurseries that I've ordered trees in, we'll be planting out there kind of theme appropriate with the dinosaur. We're going to plant a ginkgo tree, which is a living, uh, living fossil tree, and we're it's an experimental one, but the thing is, is we're trying to keep in mode, and we're going to have a grade school of uh, class uh, from a Christian school. Uh, three or eleven children will show up, and they'll be there. And uh, so it's always good to have kids there, as well as you know, as many city officials as possible, and maybe even the mayor. <laughs> you're you're in my calendar. I do, that's what I was just putting in. So okay, <laughs> yeah, you're, so you're talking about the Arbor Day one, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, I put you in the calendar. So and so the thing is, is we're just hoping to uh, get things going again. And and uh, I tell you what, I we had an informal meeting with this group, and and they uh, it is really exciting because we see several projects where and uh, that we can cooperate with and that they're excited about being a part of it. So, so, and I'm hoping for some more members as well. All right. What day is that? Uh, 22nd, is that a? 
That is a Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it looks like you have a great group of people to help steer that committee. Yep, it's a beginning. You know, I mean, if we've got others that are interested, I'd rather get more in there. But I also, um, you you always have that central group. But you know, the thing is, is if they are on there too long, you got to almost recycle and spin them off into subcommittees and then bring them back in just so they don't, you know, they stay interested and they don't. That's what we our goals are. So, Mr. Some of Steiner. Us get, some of us get recycled. <laughs> <laughs> so. All right. Thank you, Mr. Plum. Thank you. I don't know if you need approval of it or do we? No. Um, one of the things that it says there's a committee established. It didn't say who. Uh, we brought this up with the planning and zoning, who's somewhat been the the, the status quo committee. Uh, they agreed it was a good idea. We just wanted to share it with you. Um, and then planning and zoning will finalize uh, that as well at their meeting this okay. month. And then uh, the committee will report to them quarterly. Okay. Good deal. All right. Thank you. Yep. Uh, we have a, another report, and that's from uh, Public Works Director Zeroff. Uh, Public Works Week. Yes, thank you, uh, President Decker and Commission. Um, we are uh, doing a press release for our Public Works Week. It is scheduled for May 20th through May 23rd. Um, uh, we're celebrating it the same way, uh, same time as the National Public Works Week. And um, uh, some of the activities we have scheduled uh, will be for in-house, we're gonna have a Public Works Employees Appreciation Luncheon and Training on Monday. But May 21st, the Tuesday, we're going to have an open house at the Baylor and Compactor from 3 to 4 p.m., which is open to the public. And as uh, Mr. Quam stated, Arbor Day is on the Wednesday uh, at the museum from 9 to 10 a.m., open to the public. And then on Thursday from 5 to 7 p.m., May 23rd, uh, we're going to have an open house at the public work facility uh, from I don't think it, yeah, from 5 to 7 p.m. Uh, and we are uh, inviting the public to attend uh, to meet uh, the public works employees, uh, see what the city has and uh, for the facilities and equipment, and ask the questions that uh, come around annually on all sorts of things. So um, I just wanted to make sure that everybody was aware of that and uh, uh, have it uh, make sure the public can and will attend. And we will be putting something in the paper, right, Dane? I mean, yes, it'll be in okay. the paper. We're going to do it on Facebook. And also, I'd like okay. to w welcome, uh, you know, the uh, mayor and, and the commission members, some of the events, if you would. That would be great, and we'd appreciate it. Okay. Looks like a busy week to, that week. Just and that. And, uh, so um, we'll have to get the word out and make sure that we share it on our Facebook page just to everybody and get that out. And what other, you know, ever other uh, social media you're on. <laughs> so, um, well, thank you, Mrs. Zeroff. Any uh, questions for Mrs. Zeroff? If not, we'll move into uh, public issues of city concern, not on the agenda. If you have any issues um, that concern you and you're a member of the Dickinson citizens, citizenry and you wish to come forward, um, please come forward with your issue and uh, let us know your concerns. Anyone from the public? Seeing no one from the public, we will move into commission items. Uh, before we go into executive session, commissioners, are there any items that weren't on the agenda this evening that you wish to discuss? Seeing there are no items that the commission wishes to discuss, we will move into executive session for attorney consultation under North Dakota Century Code 44-0419.1 paragraph two and 44-04-19.2. Yes, sure. Sure, I'd like uh, to see if we could get a motion to move into so move. executive session for attorney consultation. We have a motion. Second. We have a second. All in favor of moving into attorney consultation in executive session, 
State aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. We'll be moving into executive session. We are back in normal session with the city commission meeting and we have met with the attorney to consult um, under the executive session uh, rules and we have provided them with guidance to move forward with our uh, claim. So this will conclude the, the meeting. Is there anything additional from commissioners under the commission section that you wish to speak about? If not, I'd look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. We are adjourned.